So I'm a reptile guy, so I like either June or September whenever the diamondbacks come out. <laughs> so that's my best chance to see them around here. Hello everyone and welcome to our BioBlitz Oklahoma podcast. This week is the second episode in our Oklahoma State Park series. Angelina Stan Campiano this week talks with Romano State Park managers Levi and Travis. Our Fall BioBlitz event will be at Romano's this year and they will give you some fun details about the park's wildlife, geology, and amenities. Maybe you'll want to check it out before our official event in October. Hi, BioBlitzers. Oklahoma State Parks Senior Naturalist Coordinator and BioBlitz Co-Coordinator Angelina here. I'm coming to you from Roman Nose State Park. We're here and we're masked and we're excited to talk about this Western Oklahoma Park. And so today I actually have two guests. So this is our second Oklahoma State Parks feature of the original seven parks. And to celebrate, we have two people here to interview today. Park Manager Levi, and then we also have assistant park manager Travis and they're going to talk to us about flora and fauna and visiting the park and everything in between. So Levi, I don't know if you remember but I'm here at the park on your hiring committee and you were actually on my hiring committee That's right. when I came over to parks and I was in South Carolina it was a phone interview. We didn't meet in person until later and I think we ran into each other at Lowe's. Did you're right on that and Tahlequah and so you were buying stuff for the park yes and I was buying to add to my plant collection at home and you're in your park uniform and so we met and we've worked together a lot since then yeah you're a great asset to parks and we've had a fun couple years so before you were at Tinkeller and then you were at Lake Murray some too yeah, that's correct and it's a fun yeah. thing in parks because a lot of us myself not included have worked at a number of parks and so you, you've worked literally around the state geographically, yeah. but then you've seen a lot of different park features and events and everything else and can kind of bring what you learn to your new park. Right. And then Travis was at Red Rock, which is no longer a state park. Yep. Uh, started there in uh, March of 13, and that's how I built my career here and been fortunate and lucky to be able to pursue my career in state parks and enjoy every minute of it. So these two, you can't see, but they're young guys, and it's just fun to be able to talk park stuff with each other, just snowball ideas and, and talk about how we can improve and how we can learn from one another. And it's fun, just like lunchtime conversation, how excited we all are about where Oklahoma State Parks are going. There's a lot of new changes coming, coming along, and stuff has already been implemented, and it's uh, been very beneficial to the state parks. I'm really excited for what's coming up here at Roman Nose. So one thing is BioBlitz yeah. will be this October here at Roman Nose. And we are excited about that. Yeah, you guys are going to love it. And you all have made this park so beautiful and so welcoming. I'm excited to have so many BioBlitzers come and get to experience that. Excited for new opportunities and excited to see what else we have to offer that maybe we didn't know. That's what's so crazy about BioBlitz. So we were talking that Ricky Cothran came last October for our bio bits mm -hmm. and did some work here. And he works with aquatic invertebrates, which is such a specialty. You guys have walked by the creek how many times and you don't know the things in there. Oh, no. yeah. A lot of stuff, you know, when you work on a day-to-day -day basis, you kind of take some of it for granted, but it's kind of refreshing to have people come along and say, hey, did you know you had this in here? And then it gets you interested even more into what you've already loved doing. So. That's, that's kind of the nice things that come out of all this. Yeah, so it's great for us to learn, and then when visitors come, we can share that information with them. On some of my hikes, I always like to point out lichen at the park, and I talk about how Sheila Strong, who is the lichen lady for Oklahoma, found some rare things at Sequoia. And like me personally, I would have never known that, but through BioBlitz, she came out and she taught me about that, and now I can tell visitors. So let's start with a few basics so that people can visualize your park. Where is Roman Nose and what does it look like driving in? So like you stated, uh, Roman Nose is located in western Oklahoma, about five miles north of Watonga, Oklahoma. The majority of the park uh, sits down in a gypsum and red shell canyon. 
So from the Oklahoma City metro area, Thunderbird sits south of Oklahoma City, and then Romanos is really the closest park other than that. Yep. Yep. We're the closest park, Western Oklahoma, for sure. A lot of people, we, we do get a lot of visitors from Oklahoma City just because uh, we're the next closest park out that kind of gets them a whole different type of scenery that they might not get at, at a nearby park like Thunderbird. You know, everyone has their unique scenic uh, things that, that they can offer that's different than everyone else's. So. And you all have a lodge here. Yep, uh, lodge cabins, uh, the new Foggy Bottoms restaurant out here that uh, you know, was uh, started up this year and we're excited to see what else is going to come out here but we're slowly getting stuff out here that it will hopefully keep bringing more and more people out here. And it's a interest. really easy drive from Oklahoma City. Yeah, literally you kind of go straight west and then you hang a right and you stay <laughs> like that all the way up. So. <laughs> so it's easy directionally and then just easy to get in the car and make that yeah. about hour and a half drive yep. yeah hour and a half so it's just far enough from the city that it's like a destination yes yep. without being a haul you can actually make it a day trip if you'd like unless you come with my mom because <laughs> she packs enough stuff we could we could stay for a few <laughs> weeks and be fine so this is a, a park that i recommend a lot to people in oklahoma city who maybe aren't familiar with parks they're scared to go to a park for the first time to them there's parks people and then there's city people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when people are asking, where should I go? I almost always say, you should try Romano's because it is that historic park. And like you said, the scenery is so different from the city and really anywhere else. And then you have all the amenities. Yeah, uh, you know, me being a, a former city person myself, uh, <laughs> It took a lot of getting used to coming out this far out, and you get a little intimidated by some things, a lot of open space, and but it also makes you realize that maybe, maybe I've been missing out a little bit, that fresh air, the scenery that sometimes is controlled by city life as opposed to naturally protected out here. To me, that kind of uh, opens up your mindset a little bit, refreshes you and rejuvenates you just a little bit. So one thing that I always notice with Roman Nose is there's two ways to say it. Have you guys ever noticed that? The way some people say Roman knows, and then people in parks, we make it like it's one syllable. It's like, yes. <laughs> yep. yeah. Roman knows. And then Romanos. you're like, what's that word you keep yep. saying? And then, you gotta say two N's. It's got two N's in there. A lot of people will go Roman knows and spell it all together. It's like, well, you get used to saying it one way, and then you get someone say it completely different, your ear catches it. Yes. So it's <laughs> Roman knows. Yes. And tell us a little bit about that name. So Romanos is named after one of the last Cheyenne warriors of, uh, of this area. He used to retreat to this area, and I think he even made his homestead in this area before his passing around 1917, I believe. He was around a family called the Cronkite family, and that intel started the whole uh, process of where we are now as a state park alongside with the CCC. So the series that I've started, it is the original seven parks, which is so cool. Like, what a great number, you know, <laughs> seven. And you all were part of that. And people might think like, oh, well, what's the big deal? But when you come into the park, you feel the history. It's like taking a little bit of a step back in time. We've managed to try to protect, and we still are protecting a lot of the original CC work. A lot of it is still some work in progress. There's some hidden stuff that even till this day, uh, like most recently, we finally were able to clear brush away from an old uh, uh, dynamite cave made out of gypsum that was built by the CCC back in the day. And, you know, a lot of stuff you kind of have to ask around for to see. Some stuff we hope in the future to get more exposed for people to come and actually experience. The case in point, the pool uh, day use area or the big springs day use area, you can still have an opportunity to walk down the original staircase the CCC built back in the day. They were not messing around when no. they built things. They built it to last. It, it, it lasts and yeah, stay there forever. <laughs> yes, and it's the perfect marriage because all the CCC structures here really give you that feel of a state park and its rich history. The pride that went into everything. Yes, and learning about the men who came and were sending money back home to their families yes. and were building these structures in the process. Like they were being put to work to benefit the people for the long haul. It provided a lot of opportunities for people whenever the, the CCC uh, started 
doing work out here that a lot of people might not have had a chance to do. So not only was it a benefit for nature and, pres and preservation, but like you said, it's a big benefit for families and surrounding areas. If it wasn't for the CCC out here, we you know Watonga may or may not have been here at the time. You know? So it played a major role in a lot of the communities that these, the, the parks, the original seven, get to be around. My mom, when we were talking about Roman Nose, she said, I went there as a little girl. I wonder if they still have the pool. I wonder if there's the spring. And you can't say that about a lot of places that 55 years ago, there was the same thing that kids today are enjoying, but that it's still as beautiful. Yes, you know, part of the whole thing of preservation is unfortunately you sometimes have to block some access points to some things. It's still there, but you know, years of not pro not being more protective about it caught up to some places. Like, you know, we have a, 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 cave, a cave that has a waterfall that comes out of about roughly around uh, 600 gallons per minute. It's a beautiful sight to see. You know, it's, it's really something that you just wouldn't expect when you, when you come here, but over the years, erosion unfortunately takes its toll from visitors, so we've had to kind of back off a little bit on advertising of that, but there's still a lot of stuff that this park has to offer that's been here since the beginning that people can still see, which we try to keep up and maintain and preserve so people can still walk up physically and see it without us having to just say, well, it's there, but unfortunately you can't. We still try to strive to keep some stuff available to the public. I think Oklahoma State Parks has done really well with that statewide in a lot of places. So you can still see the areas that you saw in childhood, but I think people understand more about human impact and that we need to preserve the areas in doing so, not walk right up to them. Yeah. So Levi knows that my like park scrapbook that I do is I take a photo, a selfie in front of the park signs. And so I've been doing it for years. I just started doing it because I liked doing it. And then I realized that that was like my documentation. So I can go back and be like, have I been to that park? And so I was so excited to take <laughs> my picture here, which this was one of the last parks that I visited in the state. And so I came in the fall and the sign was under construction. Yes, so our actual main entrance sign for the park. And we've been lucky enough to preserve it and keep it here. Uh, the last time it's actually been renovated was actually around 2000. This year, the most exciting thing we've had to start the new year off with is a duly preserved, renovated uh, sign. Will hopefully uh, last for another, you know, 20, 30 years down the road until it's needed for another update. But we hope that uh, it's here to stay for a long time, even past us, and people can still come out and enjoy it. We haven't taken away anything that maybe some of the people, you know, in their younger days were able to do they can still come and do that stuff up here, you know, take a picture with the Indian head. And that's, that's really nice to still have that around. A lot of parks don't have that luxury anymore because you know, of lack of uh, preservation on stuff. So you have all of that history and all of those wonderful facilities, but then you also have things like this beautiful new lodge that we're sitting in now. So it's really state of the art, beautiful, but fits in really nice with the scenery here. Yeah, so we have a 22 room lodge and was actually remodeled back in 2010 whenever was a hurricane I don't uh, remember, I don't remember but name. damage from a hurricane I believe and so they actually tore out the lodge and rebuilt it and then we also have 11 cabins and then campgrounds tent and RV we're staying in a cabin and it's really cute we're having a good time. So it's it's all levels of accommodation. Yeah. So if people are coming for BioBlitz this year, they can book any of that. We'll have uh, the group camp booked yep. with the A-frames and camping available. But if people want to book in the nice uh, lodge or if they want to book a cabin, they can do that through Travel OK. Yes, or call the lodge and they can help also. Today we went out and we saw there are all of these mountain bluebirds I was asking Levi if there were mountain bluebirds here or if I was just seeing eastern bluebirds. And he said, well, I'll show you the mountain bluebirds. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, they're in a cedar tree. I was like, okay, I still don't know what you mean. We drove down, they're literally in this one cedar tree that's dead in, in the, the lake. The lake. And there are like 50 mountain bluebirds. Yep. So is there any other cool flora or fauna in the area that visitors would like to check out? 
The one I can think of is uh, earlier in the year, uh, Merlin was spotted. You had a cute owl. Cute uh, owl. Uh, that was back uh, in uh, June whenever I actually moved here. A barred owl them. chick. Yep. And then you and also two. had a reptile visitor. Yes, uh, the diamondback rattlesnake. And there are, are some invertebrate visitors. Yes. Uh, that have stingers uh, on them. Your scorpion. Oh, scorpions, yes. In my house. <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> Sticky traps have helped a lot. <laughs> So it's it's only an hour and a half from Oklahoma City, but it's like a completely different landscape here. It is. Everyone thinks Western Oklahoma is just this flat grasslands, and you know, you come here, it shows you something completely different. I can verify that it is not flat because we went on that hike. What's to, that nice long hike? To Inspiration Point, which yes. is a great hike. Whenever you get up there, it gives you a great view of majority of the park. Actually, you can look to the east and they actually can see the end of the canyon kind of open up to the bottom land. So we've talked about people who have visited in their youth and maybe come back and we've talked about people who are new to the park have never been here before. What would you tell someone who maybe has been here several times? Is there a hidden gym or a trail that maybe people don't know about? Something off the beaten path? Uh, One thing uh, that we've actually been slowly pushing people towards due to the fact that we're trying to preserve one of our waterfalls is we actually have a hidden waterfall that right now is actually more open than it probably will be when the lake finishes its construction and it's actually on the uh, uh, two lakes area trail uh, right uh, right between uh, the general store and uh, or Lake Baker and Lake Watonga and uh, if you go up there a little ways that you can actually see a really cool uh, waterfall that feeds out of Lake Baker into Lake Watonga. It uh, comes off like a little uh, cliff side inside tucked into the side of the hill. Um, the other one is, is uh, a lot of people up until uh, this year when we started kind of pushing it a little bit, even for me, I didn't notice it until uh, this year, uh, or no, the beginning of last year, was we have a uh, rock formation that has a uh, possible, I guess, lack of a better word, silhouette or... I would say a sculpted yeah, head of Romanos yeah, and, into the side of a rock. And we don't really give out that location in detail because we want people to come out and really try to make it like a scavenger hunt type thing. We can give you a general idea of what to look for, the general area, but uh, we want you to use your imagination because when you do look at it, You can walk right past it. I have walked past that probably a million times, and up until that point, I would have never noticed it until someone said, hey, look at it from this perspective, and there it was. So that's one of the things for people who, you know, who's been out here but may have never known that. And we have actually had a lot of those people who've been coming out here since a kid, since I was a kid, and never noticed that was there. And now they're, like, wanting to bring their grandkids out here, want to say, hey, come find this with me. That's really cool. (laughs) There is way more water here than I imagined when we are talking. I mean, people have so many misconceptions about different parts of the state, but especially Western Oklahoma. And I am totally guilty of that. So when I came out in the fall for the first time, I just kept saying, there's so much water. There's (laughs) there's so much water. There's another waterfall. There's a spring. There's so much water. And it's pretty year round. Yes. Yes. It's it's consistent flow will never, even in, in the toughest droughts, it's never changed. It's been consistent flowing. Um, now, if you get a really, really heavy rain, it does pick up. But other than that, it's it, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's going to be here for a long time. Do you all have a favorite season here at the park? Either with the leaves or the weather or visitation or activities? So I'm a reptile guy, so I like either June or September whenever the diamondbacks come out. <laughs> it's my best chance to see them around here. So We like that attitude yeah. in Blitz. So that's what I like. I'm more of a fall-winter guy because once all the leaves fall, it gives people more of an opportunity to see some of the back landscape that may have been hidden by trees a lot. So there's, it comes back to there's a lot of stuff different throughout the year people can see. And plus... For maintenance wise, it's a lot easier <laughs> to work on things during the winter time. Yeah. <laughs> and this time of year, winter time, we're running a February deal throughout parks, the sweetheart deal for fifteen percent off your stay in the month of February. And this would be a great place for a couple to come for a weekend. 
Yeah. Stay at the lodge, eat at Swadley's, like have a nice dinner, hike. So if you have not planned your Valentine's yet, you better get on it. Yeah. Yep. You two planned your Valentine's yet? I have two married men before me. <laughs> Drop the ball just a little bit. There, <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so you all know that I love collaborations and sitting right here is an example of it. Um, we talked about earlier just collaborating to me is just making things bigger and better than you could do by yourself. And so one of my big things in parks is to help connect scientists, hobby biologists, you know, citizen scientists, kind of our BioBlitz crowd to parks because sometimes there's just not that connection where they know that they can come and volunteer or they think that you all only need scout troops of 50 people and they don't realize that maybe they have a talent that could really benefit parks. Are there some opportunities for volunteers here? One of the things that we're excited about in, you mentioned earlier, sitting on an interview committee today was for a rec coordinator. So whenever this person comes in, you know, to help this person get started, come out, volunteer, do a class, whatever the profession that person might be in, updating our birds of Romanos, Things have changed and different birds have come through or maybe don't come through anymore. We lack in that here, so it helps us a lot. As far as anything, uh, you know, structural or anything like that, or it's kind of along the lines of uh, maintenance type things. You know, we we can always uh, look at doing some, you know, type bird houses type things along the lines mm -hmm. there to bring, you know, people who might be more hands-on and, you know, give them the opportunity to also leave an impression on the park as well. You know, that to me, working out here every day, I feel like I'm doing my part, leaving a lasting impression. And a lot of people don't get to have that feeling. And so being able to provide something that people can come out here and say, I helped add to the nature of the parks and last my lasting or left my lasting impression, I think goes a long ways too. Yeah, I always find my volunteers have fun, but also they just feel such ownership and contribution like you were talking about that they find it really fulfilling to come and help. Yes. But it's a good example, like you said, some people like to come and work for a whole day and just bust it and yes. knock a lot of stuff out. Other people like to do things at home in their hobby wood shop or whatever they have set up and then bring it and donate to the park. Yeah, yeah. and all that stuff really helps us. Even you know, it, it, if we get caught up in some things, we, we sometimes, don't have the opportunity to build things or do things for the park that a lot of people could offer or is second nature to them and do even better than us, which we'll, we'll take that opportunity all day long, especially if it benefits the park and preserving wildlife and nature, because our goal is to, I mean, our, our, one of our most, most goals for the parks is to protect our natural surroundings and our wildlife, and anybody who can help with that would be more than welcomed out here. One thing that I a lot of time uh, seek help on that I know we'll be doing here is creating more signage. And so just information about the landscape and flora and fauna. And so when I write signs for Sequoia, I send them over to Dr. Ryburn or different experts to help me just look over them. So if there are any experts that would wanna help with that or coming out and identifying some cool grasses uh, or just different yes. things that are interesting to your park. Yes. We would love to have those experts. Absolutely. We are experts in nothing, but everyone that's listening to our po podcast, they're experts in a field. Yes. You know, we're generalists in parks. We're naturalists. We're, we're people who dabble in a little bit of everything. Uh, but a lot of our BioBlitz crowd is like the leading moth person, you know? And so to have them lend their expertise would be so beneficial to us. Yes. yes. That's another reason why, why we are excited to have BioBlitz this year, next year. So Is there so. anything else you all want to share about your park? You know, with, uh, with, with the whole COVID thing that came up this year, you know, I hope that didn't deter a lot of people. I know for us out here, it, I know it reacquainted a lot of people with parks and nature and everything. And we're doing everything we can to keep people safe and stuff. So I want people to keep that in the back of their mind that they can still come out and enjoy nature and be a part of things. And we're here to accommodate the best we can to keep having more visitors out here to come see what we have. Because it means a lot to us as, you know, Levi and I being managers out here and, and our staff and maintenance crew out here doing all this work. 
uh, but it goes a lot further when we see people with smiles out here doing this. So uh, don't ever be afraid to call ahead and ask if, you know, if, hey, make sure everything's good or, you know, how's the crowd doing today or anything like that. If it makes them feel more comfortable to come out, we will try our best to make them feel as welcomed as possible. Well, thank you guys so much. It's great to have some young people with such passion for parks. You all are doing great things here. And I'm excited for BioBlitz people to come and get to see everything that you've done. So maybe they'll come and scope it out before BioBlitz. I know a lot of people do that. And we have our spring BioBlitz in April. Uh, so you can start showing off your park pretty soon. Yep. yep. Anytime anybody wants to come out, just let us know. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having us. I hope that you are inspired to make some plans to visit Romano State Park soon. You can find the Travel OK link to the park in our show notes. Like Angelina mentioned, it would be a great location for some spring BioBlitz observations in April. Keep a lookout for information about our spring event. We will be posting information on social media and on our website about our month-long Spring BioBlitz Oklahoma. And we'll do a podcast in March about how you can participate events that we have planned during the month, and ways that you can earn biodiversity prizes. This podcast is a project of BioBlitz Oklahoma, an outreach program of the Oklahoma State Parks and the Oklahoma Biological Survey at the University of Oklahoma. We hope you have time to step outside today and explore Oklahoma's amazing biodiversity. Remember, you can find biodiversity right outside your own door. Mm -hmm.